Welcome to Sonic Tonic, everyone. This is Darren Kramer. Happy to have you here. I'm going to be here for the next 30 minutes discussing the good, bad, and the ugly. Not just this theme from that great Clint Eastwood movie, but what makes music or a cocktail good or bad in your opinion. Yeah. We can't play too much of this or it'll detect that I'm playing a copyrighted material. So I have to talk every so often. I think that'll help. In the meantime, you should go get your cocktail. I decided the tonic of the day would be a Moscow mule. So that's traditionally vodka, ginger beer, and a lime. Who didn't have the copper mug. So pardon me for that. But you can also use whiskey or tequila or rum, and they're called different things. But we're here, Sonic Tonic. Glad to have you. Here every f uh, Saturday, 5 o'clock. Listen to those crazy trumpets. <laughs> Um, and in case you're wondering what Sonic Tonic is, it's about sound and about medicine. And I think music is medicine. And so I've decided it's nice to spread the word and try to get people to be more mindful and present listening to music because that's what's really, you know, transformed my life. So, welcome everyone. Hope you having a good holiday weekend. And this is going to be a lot of fun. I've put together several different clips of music and some PDFs. And hopefully, just to open up your mind a little bit to making, just knowing why you're making decisions and why you're making, why you think something's good or bad. Um, so here's to you. This is my Moscow Mule vodka, ginger beer, little lime. I already squeezed one in. And what do I love about it? That burn of the ginger. Again, you've seen what I was using. It's this ginger beer called Cock and Bull. It's really great it's got a lot of bubbles and it's got a lot of strong ginger burn right in the back of your throat as you swallow it and um this vodka it looks like a traditional kind of polish writing and uh labeling there but it's actually from vienna me and my dad went to vienna just a year and a half ago cool river cruise vienna austria highly recommend it uh, my friend Andy Middleton teaches sax at the university there. Um, he was at University of Miami just before I went there. Um, so um, let's get started. You heard a little bit of that theme from Ennio Marconi, who's written a lot of great movie themes. And this is classic. You can't think of the good, bad, and the ugly without having this theme in your head. That's powerful right there. You know, music is powerful. Um, so. Before we get started, let me make sure people are here. <laughs> Julie's there. Moscow Mule, yum. That's right. And I kind of forget about them. You know, a month or two will go by, and then I'm going, I want something with bubbles, something different. And then, oh, yeah, Moscow Mule. And actually, ginger beer just on its own is not alcoholic, and it's super refreshing. So highly recommended. Um, again, I haven't tried to play too many clips of cover tunes meaning other people's music because facebook and youtube are pretty strict about uh these algorithms they detect a song so um i'm gonna have to talk a little more than i would and i uh, so hopefully it won't mute it and shut it down and if it does uh, we'll connect at a later time and also i put in the um, description for the live stream here if you're if you guys are interested in um possibly doing this on Zoom where it's just like a closed captioned kind of thing 
um, I could send out the link. We could all be in touch a certain way, and um, I could send you a Zoom meeting, and it could still be free, and we'd still do 30, 40 minutes or whatever. But um, it would just be in a closed meeting, so then it's not broadcast all over the place, and we could get away with doing these cover tunes. My DJ set, I have like a thousand songs in there um, that I've warped, and uh, so I can crossfade with other things and make these cool mashups and stuff. And I can't do that on my Funky Fridays because I tried it a little bit today, yesterday and I actually got away with it. But um, to really get into it and listen and um, hear the power of what these elements we're talking about, um, it might be something cool. So let me know right in the comments if you're interested in doing a Zoom meeting. And even if there was only 10 or 20 of us, it would still be really fun. So something to think about. Here's Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Okay, that's it. That's all you need. <laughs> you know? I mean, um, what is playing? What is that, you know? It's kind of nice to think about it. First of all, we started with some sort of drum. And there's like an organ or something, super soft, just holding a note, holding a D. That's the key we're in, D minor. And then you hear this. It's like a flute, right? I have a little sample here. It's the perfect fourth, A to D. And isn't that interesting how that can like define a movie, an entire movie, that sound? Um, so that's powerful. That's why composers are really important. They rule the world, in my opinion. It's awesome. So why is that good or bad, you know? You either like that little melody or you don't, or you don't even think about it. You're indifferent, and all of it's fine. But uh, Sonic Tonic is all about thinking why you think about something a certain way. What is it that you hate about a Moscow Mule? You've never liked it. Uh, maybe you only had it once in a bar late at night and you'd already been drinking with your friends for six hours. Then they said, hey, let's have a Moscow Mule. It's last call. And then they used this really lame ginger beer in it, or it didn't have any ice in it, um, or it was the well vodka and you hate vodka. I mean, you know what I mean? So one-offs are not really valid, but isn't it interesting how that can shape your future and you make all those decisions based on that. So um, I'm here to open up your mind a little bit. Okay, so we have that. Um, what else makes music good or bad? Here's what I like about it. Check this out. So there's our drum. Here's the melody. That's a different instrument. Then it's harmonica and a voice. Changed it a little. Same. Okay, now you expect the whole thing to happen again. But what happens? Ooh, down an octave. Ooh, and that's up an octave. They switched them. And different instruments. He's whistling. So this is like the second A of a standard song form. So there's some structure there. Then we want something new, and we get this awesome guitar. And people really associate that with movies, right? That Western thing. So right away, he's doing some typical things and some atypical things, which to me is what music's all about. That is so awesome. Give me something predictable, and then also then all of a sudden make a shift. That's how movies are. That's what keeps you engaged in them. And good music, in my opinion, does that. Um, so let me show you this. Um, I have spent a lot of time thinking about um, what makes music great to me. And um, this thing on the right here is a PDF you could download. I put the link, free, free stuff, on DKO Lessons. 
Um, notice I'm wearing my DKO Lessons shirt today. It was nice and white and kind of clean and bright. Oh my God, I just wrote a lyric. Um, so you can download this sheet that's on the right and it's something cool to put on your fridge and it makes you think about stuff differently. I think this is super important. Um, the four basic elements of music are starting on number four there, really. Rhythm, melody, harmony, and then in popular music, you know, lyrics is a big thing. But notice, I have three things before that that I think are more important. Emotion, creativity, and sound. Um, so Ennio Morricone, he, he nailed it. <laughs> Does that evoke emotion when you hear this? Hey, let me watch what's going on. Ooh, it's kind of mysterious. What's happening? Is it creative? Yeah. Just two simple notes, perfect fourth, but also he used cool instruments, right? So he made that choice. Um, you're just thinking, oh, start with the movie. Let me see what's going to go on. But um, a composer is there to go, how can I capture this um, emotion by writing a melody and using certain cool instruments and being creative? And um, the sound is certainly awesome. I mean, that's, that's unique. Um, and then we're going to discuss rhythm, melody, harmony, and lyrics. And then notice I have three more things to make ten total. The song form, the arrangement, you know, I just discussed that. You had like an A section, and then they, he did the same thing, but he changed the instrumentation and the octaves of the melody. So that gave it a little bit of freshness. So it's like, man, I'm going to have another one of these, but maybe I'll add some um, more lime this time because I want it to be more bitter. And does that little change in one element change the whole? Yes, it does. Um, so when I'm thinking of something that's kind of bad music or it doesn't inspire me, I think it's a lot of subtle, rough edges that then just add up to a C plus. And who wants a C plus? They say that's average, but who wants to be average? I mean, seriously, this is not an average drink. That's not an average film score. So um, up your game, you know, demand more. Um, so hopefully you can start to be aware of this stuff. So what do we got? What's good music? I hear the drums are going tonight. She hears okay. All we all know it, right? Toto, Africa, very popular tune. Listen to the sounds. Um, listen to the rhythm. Does that create a certain emotion? It's mellow, right? It's not hyper. It's not this really hard, fast punk rock thing. This is like, yeah, man. Oh, I love this tune. It's like perfect to uh, start your holiday weekend. I hear the drums echo in tonight. And the voice is very mellow when he comes in. Sounds good. What's bad? Maybe this one. Right away, what do you hear? Do you hear the difference? First one. Other one. I hear the drum. I hear the drum. Just the sounds. So now we're down um, number three there on our list. Let's look at our list. The sound matters. So when someone's going, Darren, you're kind of critical about, um, you know, this band you're listening to, and you're, why aren't you liking it? Or why don't you like this song? I have my reasons. Do I want to like it? You're darn right I do. Life's short, man. <laughs> Listen to good music. Drink good cocktails. Watch awesome movies. What am I thinking when I hear this? We all know the Toto version. This is not the Toto version. The sounds are less quality. And even that, dee -dee 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 -dee. listen how cheap it sounds. They used a cheap keyboard and it doesn't sound good. Listen to the original. There's a lot of clarity there. It's subtle. 
but it's also a lot of pure quality. Here's the other one. Now listen to the vocal. Sound a little bit off, because it is. So someone got clever and they created a, a different version and then they moved the vocal. It's not the original vocals. And they moved the vocal and made it early. So it's not in time. So the groove is then kind of messed up. So that's number four on our sheet. Um, so one more time. Listen to the vocals. hear the difference there's a lot of bands cover bands you walk into a club and it kind of sounds like that <laughs> maybe you don't notice maybe you just go oh they're playing africa it's so awesome great um but when your mind has been expanded it's hard to go back so when you have a great cocktail or you drink a really good beer you're drinking a drinking a tra trappist beer in belgium then to go and have a Bud Light in, you know, wherever, Boise, Idaho, um, it's not the same. <laughs> so um, be aware of why you like something or don't like something. Um, let's see what people are saying. Sounds mushy. <laughs> That's right, Krista. Good to have you back. Okay, Julie says Zoom would be good. Daniel Ford, great to have you here. Um, so look at this sheet on the left. I thought I'd make a little outline here. And what's the primary takeaway? What are we trying to learn today? I think it's really a great mind frame to be curious, open-minded, and educate yourself about a subject so you can make an informed decision. You know, whether you hate it or love it, why? Can you explain it? Or are you just brushing over it? Or is it triggering you from something when you were six years old? You know, that's sort of shallow. Um, so open your mind, learn something, move, move forward. Um, but it's a continual, continual moving evaluation of like the whole. Like uh, you love a Moscow mule, you love some things about it, but you don't like, you like vodka, but you hate ginger. Um, why do you hate ginger, first of all? But why? So then if you substitute in some tonic water, last week we had gin and tonics. Maybe you like vodka tonics. And and it changes your perception, you know? So here's another example of here's good. We all know it. What do we love about that? We love the sound. We love the way it makes us feel. It's a classic standard pop R&B tune by Earth, Wind and Fire called September. We love the lyrics. It's happy. Um, that groove is great. It's inspiring. It's upbeat. Um, the brass intro. Let's listen to a bad version. Wait, you're going. That doesn't sound like a bad version, because it's not yet. It's the exact same version. How can I tell? The, the brass, right? You go and hear a band play this live. A lot of times they don't have live horns. But when they do, that's some hard playing to, to pull that off. And it's sloppy. And um, so when you hear a great band, I don't hate the tune September. But I really hate it when I hear a bad version of it. Um, so here's the bad version, although the intro is the same, so it sounds good. Do you remember time, September, there was the miles, Can you hear that? I hope so. Again, his vocal was moved ahead, so he's ahead of the beat. So he's jumping it, so it's not this relaxed, grooving thing. And it's out of key. He's out of tune. We've all heard bad singers. 
you watch American Idol, there's some really great ones. There's some really bad ones, especially early in the season, right? Um, it matters whether or not you have skill. So let's look at this thing. Um, four elements music, this thing on the left. Um, rhythm, melody, harmony, lyrics. Other important elements is this, and I think this skill is kind of an important element. People now can kind of phone it in or get someone else to do stuff for them, and um, they don't take the time to just learn. Um, so are you trained or are you winging it? Something to consider. Also, the recording and production side of things is interesting. Is it clean and nice and pleasing, or is it dirty, muffled, and distorted? Um, I'll put some distortion on top of this bad one. Again, here's the good one. Nice. Here's the bad one. We put some distortion on it. I mean, you want to sit there and listen to that? Nope, I don't. Um, and what's scary to me is some people don't even notice that, which is night and day. So, um, you know, sort of sharpen up, sharpen up your palate, which is what Sonic Tonic is all about. Um, so let me show you this sheet again. This thing over on the left, um, the movie, why is it so good? You guys should um, go Google the good, bad, and the ugly. Why is it so good? And there's a guy kind of basically doing a sonic tonic about that Clint Eastwood movie and about the movie content, the script, but also um, the music and why it affects it and why it was different and made a different vibe, um, which is really interesting stuff to me um so let's listen to some we said rhythm is really important um that's the groove that's the tempo everything being in time um and then the second thing we're saying is the melody is important so what's a melody a melody is uh Right away there, that's already like kind of big interval jumps. First of all, that's perfect fourth, kind of big. And then big jump down to the third, the fourth, down to the root. Am I thinking that when I hear it? No. But it's kind of moving around. It's sort of dynamic instead of just boom. Um, as I was putting this um, talk together, uh, I... Reminded me thinking, what? There's so many melodies nowadays that are just literally one note um, or two notes. And I, I toured with Tom Jones, the singer from Wales, for um, two years. And um, in 90, yeah, end of 99, I think is when this song came out Sex Bomb. <laughs> Tom Jones, Sex Bomb. And you want to know what the melody is? Um, That's the melody. <laughs> sex bomb, sex bomb. I'm a sex bomb. Deep. Um, when you're even thinking about this, this Ennio Morricone, it's already using more notes and more intervals. And I think that's more interesting. I'm a jazz musician, so there's a lot of melodies that are super involved. And um, it takes it to a whole nother level. Like even if you're just soloing. Like, whoa! That's a heck of a lot more stuff than sex bomb, sex bomb. Um, or you're a sex bomb. I messed up the lyrics. <laughs> it said my or yours. Um, but if you hear that enough times, it starts to sound familiar to you. Up an octave. 
How about with chords underneath it? Which takes us to the next thing, harmony. There's a lot of songs that are written with one chord. Is one chord bad? No. Is one chord boring? Doesn't have to be, because you could do a lot of fun things with it. But a lot of music, these days especially, just might have, um, you know, what? Uh, it's just literally on that. And then they do all kinds of stuff over it. Just an F triad, you know. Or even more so, just a piano. Is that bad in itself? I don't think so. But is it get boring if you're only drinking straight vodka for four minutes, you know, and you're going, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. You know what I mean? So then you have maybe. Whoa. You had some spice there. I went to the four chord, but I didn't make it just. There's the four chord. Here's the one chord. That's pretty vanilla. That's not vanilla. That's what I like. That's what I'm talking when there's harmony. Um, and we change the sounds. Here's a different piano. What if we combine it with some strings? Let me change the octave. It sounds like Hill Street Blues. To me, that makes me feel something different than... Uh. You know, compared to different piano, add strings, down an octave, a little more love and care. Right? You guys have thoughts about this? <laughs> Krista, yes. Painful karaoke. It's, they don't have the copyright at a karaoke bar for the original backing tracks, meaning the L.A. guys that played on that Beach Boys tune. Um, you want a very cool documentary? Watch The Wrecking Crew. Basically, it was this group of 25, 30 people that played on all these um, rock and roll hits and R&B stuff in the 60s and 70s in L.A., and they were never mentioned. It's just the Beach Boys. But who is playing underneath the Beach Boys? It's all these people. Um, and when you go and sing a Beach Boys tune in a karaoke bar, you're not singing with the original track. The real players that did that thing. Somebody was hired to kind of put, you know, um, that tune together, and then you sing over sort of a, pardon the expression, a half-assed version of it, right? So, Christy, you're right on. Painful karaoke. That's, that's hard to sit through, unless you've had a lot of tonics. <laughs> And then you can stomach the sonic. Um, so when you hear quality music, um, support it. Um, Teresa, welcome. Yeah, love the Earth, Wind & Fire example. Earth, Wind & Fire is classic band, 50 years. Um, the longevity and why? Because it's quality. It's inspiring, positive lyrics. It's awesome grooves, awesome musicianship, awesome production. So that's why you love it. Stevie Wonder, Prince, Sting, Peter Gabriel, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, um, The Beatles, uh, you name it, right? But what's so interesting is I thought I should bring up the point. 
is uh, look at this sheet again. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, I didn't put it on this particular sheet. Um, what's very interesting is that you could still like a song that just defies all of these things. Um, there's no criteria. I'm not saying I know it all. I'm just saying consider thinking about why you love your favorite song. And I thought of a good example is, um, you know, Grateful Dead, Bob Dylan, um, Tom Waits. <laughs> um, Fleetwood Mac, right? Um, there is some very questionable vocal tones um, and sounds on some of those songs. It's not good, um, but it creates the number one thing on this sheet, which is emotion. It makes you feel a certain way. A lot of times, if you think about it, it's because it makes you feel how you did when you first heard it or that you heard it a lot in elementary school. So then that takes you back. No matter what you're doing, you're over here, and then you hear, going to make some lo make love and fun or whatever that. I remember hearing that a lot in elementary and so then all of a sudden you feel like you did in elementary school music super powerful that way um so consider that and then go but let me listen to it as a musician and go stevie nicks <laughs> does not really have a great singing voice is she super successful of course is she more successful than me of course um what did she tap into there's timing of it all. Um, the 70s were big for Fleetwood Mac. And her voice has a unique quality. And unique is creative. You know, unique is cool. So the sound of her voice, number three on this sheet, um, matters to some people. They think she's the best. But if you compare her to um, any number of other singers, you'd go, well, no, she's kind of undeveloped you know so it's neat to kind of put these things to the test um i thought maybe i should play a little bit of some of my stuff and what i was thinking about when i wrote it um here's a great example uh had michael brecker one of my favorite musicians of all time uh record on my album third cd song called in the now he agreed to do it, so then I thought, I have to write something cool um, that's worthy of him because he's recorded on everybody's albums as a tenor sax player. Um, so here's what I came up with. A lot of information in there, right? Some of you might go, I hate it. <laughs> I don't know what the heck's going on. It's like a super complex cocktail with 12 things in it, and I just want a beer. Can you just give me a Corona? <laughs> right? And that's cool. But I'm just um, encouraging you to ask why. Um, so for me... I wrote this because I think it's cool. I love how I set you up rhythmically and you think it's one thing, but it's really a different thing when the band comes in. So these are on triplets and it's skipping ever the other note. So ba ba da da ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba 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 This cool hemiola effect. You're going, whoa, wait, this is already too complex. But just listen to it. I'm saying when you hear that, don't you think, ding, 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 but that's not what it is.
different groove. Now back to the original. Yeah, but that's why jazz and um, Afro-Cuban, you know, salsa and everything is different than folk music. Why do you like folk music? I like the simplicity of it. Awesome. But there's actually some simple jazz, too. Miles Davis, So What, has two chords in it, and it's really mellow and awesome. Um, so check that out. Um, here's another song. I Oh, um, so then I did a little offshoot of that same song, In the Now, with Michael Brecker. Um, and then I recorded with him in the studio. It's one of the highlights of my career so far. And, um, but as I was coming up with the idea to make this track, how could it be way different than this other really bombastic one? So listen to this. Why is this different? So he's playing a lot of complex melody, right? He's improvising over these four chords, which are traditional in kind of a flamenco style. You hear the guitar, but then did you notice the castanets come in after one round? So he did a round, then the guitars came in, then you felt, oh, it's like a flamenco kind of thing. Then there's castanets, then there's a shaker, and it all starts to develop. So it's like a five-course meal. Um, you have this cheese thing, then you have a salad, then you have a uh, main course, then you have the pasta, and then you ha have dessert. I mean, it's a whole thing. So that's how music can be, and that's how I think of it as a composer. Um, here's another one, Obin Wan Kenobi. Thought, start with just drums. Set up this hyper groove. Bring in the band. It only hangs there. Now we go to the four chord, C7. Back to the one. Hang out there, let it simmer. Back to the four. Back to the one. Let's take it somewhere else. Bridge, based on so much James Brown. Now how about some hits? Back to the main thing. Longer hits. It's interesting. Change chords. Change the groove. Go up a half step. Hits. None of that's an accident. Give it a lot of thought as a composer. And you can give it thought as a listener and just go, this is why I really love, um, you know, uh, Metallica or something versus, um, you know, the Carpenters. But if you really listen to the Carpenters, that stuff is awesome. Great songwriting. What does that mean? Awesome emotion. Awesome storytelling. Awesome vocals. In tune. They're skilled. They're playing the instruments. Did you know um, Karen Carp Carpenter was a great percussionist and drummer? Um, and uh, so there's so many things, layers to this stuff, you know, that kind of open up your mind. Let me let me look what you guys are saying. You guys asking stuff? And... Scott Mueller. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Uh, we were at Erie Junior Senior High together. And then my mom let us uh, drive across Colorado into 
Kansas, into or Emporia, Kansas, and go to a jazz camp, Clark Terry Jazz Camp, that was led by our one and only Bob Montgomery here in Denver. So this is years ago. Scott says, Darren, have you ever listened to Nelson Rangel's versions of Quincy Jones' Everything Must Change? Great rendition. Yes, I've heard that. And here's a little bit extra trivia. Have you heard me and my good friend Pete Olstead, who we were on tour with Tom Jones, we played on Nelson Rangel's version of That's the Way of the World, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Ooh, okay, yeah. This happens every Sonic Tonic. That, that's a lot of uh, things coming together, like uh, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> seven separations from Kevin Bacon. Which makes me think we should do a, a Sonic Tonic with uh, Bloody Marys. Um, so, Brandon, thanks for coming. Um, so, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, here's another uh, little example of why would I like this song? Why did I write it? It's called Bone Chillin'. So if I didn't write it and I was listening to it, why did I like it? I go acoustic bass, great strings. Ooh, what's that weird sound? Trombone. Great effects on it. A lot of reverb and a little delay. Great note. Now the drums, second A. You hear that snare? More effects on the trombone there. So it gives it some spice. And what's gonna happen now? I wanna change. Ooh, no bass. Strings are a little stronger in the mix. What was that sound? You, very interesting. What's gonna happen now? So it's just grooving. I think it's the solo. It's just making up his own melody. Nice delay. Ooh, that's cool. And what's the background happening? Those are reversed. Those are like piano comps, but they're reversed. So it makes this unique sound. Interesting effects on the trombone. That's what it's all about, this song. It's like ear candy. Tons of little things in there. Like a Bloody Mary. I'm ready for more action. Double time lick. I'm ready for something different. Back to this interlude. No bass. Now I want something more to happen. Let's move it forward. Listen to the drums. Now we're grooving. And then we're gonna change chords. Different bass notes. Three harmed. Gives it a freshness. That sounded really good. I wanna hear that again. Great effects on the trombone. Sassy. If you guys like this kind of thing, it takes me three to six hours to uh, put one of these together. And I really love doing it. So let me know if there's a subject you're interested in hearing about. Let me know about the Zoom thing if we want to get together on there and go deeper with some cover tunes. But uh, any tips would be more than welcome. Appreciate it. Once again, I'm DJ DKO. And this was a fun one. The good, bad, and the ugly. They're always existing. We just 
try to gravitate toward the good. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next week, 5 o'clock on Saturday. And don't forget, I always have a funky Friday, 5 o'clock next week. Will be my eighth one. So excited about that. You're watching Sonic Tonic. Have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs>